you know, really confronting the problems with organic and really speaking up about them is a double-edged sword to some degree. I, mean, I believe we need to do it, but it's sad to me. It's sad that that has to happen. I'm Pete Johnson. We're at Pete's Greens in Craftsbury, Vermont. We grow about 100 acres of mixed vegetables, have about two and a half acres in covered production. Cover crop a couple hundred acres every year. And we market through a year-round CSA, farmer's market, little farm stand, and lots of different stores and restaurants all over, the, mostly in Vermont, but also some to Boston, New York City. When you walk into a hydroponic greenhouse or, or lettuce operation, tomato operation, it's clearly different from a soil system. And I'm not, I'm not a zealot. I'm not here to tell you it's necessarily better or worse, but it's definitely different. It doesn't uh, need to have the same name. And the consolidation of organic uh, production into bigger and bigger operations you know, in, in the vegetable world, that, that sort of had already happened 20 years ago, 20 year plus ago. Um, and we've been living in that environment ever since. And we've developed our own niches within that. Where it's really having a big effect in Vermont right now is on the, on the dairy side, where we had about a 10 year run where small organic dairies did really well. They, they were able to make, you know, a living for a family with 30, 40, 50, 60 cows which was really exciting and really good for the culture of our, of our region. And those days seem to be ending because the, the pasture rule seems to be taken very seriously in the Northeast. I know farms that spend a lot of time and energy making sure that they, they achieve the requirements there. And uh, some of these out West are not, not doing that at all. So it seems like one of the most unlevel parts of the whole organic playing field. And USDA is not preventing it. It's a big mystery to me why, why that is okay. You know, anytime you can capitalize something and figure out how to make more money doing it, somebody will, somebody will do it. And it's really sad because for someone like that to take the leap to you know, processing their own milk or, or whatever is a, is a big step and only some people can do that. And I'm just sort of watching that world deteriorate where it was really a bright light for a while. Um, have lots of friends and neighbors who are stuck in that right now and are still mostly limping along, but it's not like it was at all. And the writing's on the wall. There was a, the standards board was meeting in Stowe, which is about as close to here as you can get. And we decided to put together a few tractors and some posters and banners and head over there and have a rally. And it was, it was fun and it seemed to have, you know, I think, I think it was good for them to see that people in Vermont cared. It's been a tough uphill fight the whole time. And that's led us to this point where we have, you know, we're starting a different program. One of the things I like about the Real Organic Project is that Currently, it's not super burdensome. You know, we're tagging along with USDA um, inspectors, and um, there's a few additional things, but we're not uh, creating a, a whole additional, really burdensome system that I think would be hard for farmers to, to engage with. But branding is really important, and being part of, um, you know, ROP is something that can differentiate your product from from others and I'm excited to watch the, the branding of this organization really take off and become something that people understand and we can all talk about more um, because I think that's really where, where the value starts to come um, and those of us who are farming this way can start to, to show people more easily this is how we do things and have them understand that. Well, some of the differences are, you know, hydroponic production is prohibited. We actually have real standards that are enforced and verified about pasturing and much stronger standards about housing of, of organic livestock, which I've had the privilege of being in some factory scale organic chicken layer houses. And I don't think it's quite what most people imagine organic egg production to be. Um, so, 
you know, we've tightened up some of those, some of those things. And I think it, it leads to a, you know, production systems across the board that are more like what consumers have in mind when they pick up something that's organic off the shelf. I see most people coming to organic or many people coming to organic when they have kids. Um, they're worried about, I think they're mostly worried about chemicals and hormones and things like that in their food when they have kids. And that seems to be the, the opening for many people. And then, you know, in Vermont, it's been amazing what's happened in the last 10 to 15 years where the education of the consumer and people really get much deeper into it than that. They learn, they learn what, it, what it means to support small farms, what that does for the community. I mean, organic means to me so much, so much more than, you know, the prohibition on what you can't use. So I guess for me, it's really sort of a, a way of growing where you try to create the proper conditions, set things out there, take care of them at the level required, but not spend more time or energy than is needed and let nature really manage most of it. And now I think of vegetables as basically being like, you go in, you sort of like have this cover crop system going, this nutrient flywheel, organic matter flywheel, and you dash in and grow, grow a vegetable crop and get out of there again as quick as you can. Because it only makes it worse. Um, vegetables bring pests and diseases. It's harder to control the weeds in them. Um, we tend to, you know, when we're cultivating our vegetables, that we're more open to erosion then. And we really like to minimize the period of time that we're cropping vegetables on a given piece of land. And that has led to a pretty low input system for us where we have a lot of land to manage, but we don't have to worry too much about crop performance um, because we're, we're going into a good system where there's a lot of organic matter decomposing, a lot of nutrients, um, a lot of healthy tilth. And uh, so it's sort of a balance of traveling more around the neighborhood in order to have better conditions. We don't irrigate outdoors. Um, we just let organic matter take care of that. And so it's a lower input as far as caring for each crop, but we're managing more land as the trade-off. In the end, hopefully have a profitable scenario that's good for the environment and good for people. The NLSB in meeting in Jacksonville was the first one I had really spent much time at. It was, it was really clear how many interests there are, you know, tugging at everybody's sleeve there, trying to get their attention. We all understand this, but powerful moneyed voices sometimes get more attention. And, but then there's always something powerful about people coming out of the woods and speaking up.